Okay, thank you, Larry, and to all the organizers for inviting me here to this symposium. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's a long time since I've last been to Boston. It's 11 years since I left Boston, and this is now the first time I'm back, so it's really, really nice. Thank you very much for the opportunity to come here. Um, Larry has actually suggested this uh, title for my presentation, and I think it was a good idea because it also tells you a little bit about how I came into the 7 Tesla project. Um, it all started with the Allegra system. I was from 1998 to 1999, I was part of a small development group uh, outside of the headquarters in Erlangen. We were based in Oxford in the UK, and we developed this uh, head scanner Allegra, a three Tesla head scanner, and MGH was our second customer. I was then in charge of this installation at MGH and spent about three months here in early 2000 trying to install the system. And during the, the installation, I faced the first problems. At the end of my stay, I noticed that the gradient coil was broken and I had to replace this gradient coil just a couple of days be before my scheduled return to Germany. I got a new gradient coil from Germany, but it turned out that this, this gradient coil was also broken. It was already broken when it left the factory. So <laughs> I had to order a new gradient coil again, and this has just left the potting chamber and arrived in Boston unfinished. So I had to go to the Home Depot and get some filler and some paint and then finish the grading coil on site before I could install it. But then that was the grading coil that worked and afterwards system worked and I could leave. Uh, so that was my first contact here with the MGH. Afterwards, when I came back to Germany, I was also involved in the discussions about uh, the 7 Tesla project, which was started at MGH. And a little later, Larry Walt contacted me and asked me whether I could imagine joining the MGH team in their integration efforts and work together with Doug Kelly on the integration of the system. Um, first, I wasn't sure about it because my first time at MGH, I didn't like it too much. It was very stressful. It was spring and the weather was poor. And I also found Boston a little bit too big and too noisy. So I wasn't sure whether I should go, but then I met our then head of the business line MR, Heiner Kohlem, who also was one of my bosses some time ago. I met him at a vending machine at uh, the headquarters in Germany and talked about this offer that I could go to MGH with him. And he was very supportive of this idea. And then basically the decision was made. I, I couldn't do anything against that anymore. MGH wanted to have me and my boss wanted to let me go. And so I went to the MGH. Huh? <laughs> The paperwork actually was a little delayed because of the terror attacks uh, from 9-11. That was when my paperwork for the visa application was sent out to Germany, but the flights were canceled for about a week. And so it was getting tight, but everything went finished on time. And I arrived here at MGH um, end of September 2001 and started on October 1st. By then, actually, Doug Kelly had already left the team again, and it was then Larry and me who were in charge of the 7 Tesla integration. Uh, so the 7 Tesla system was initially equipped with a Magnex gradient coil, and the idea was to have separate um, RF mixers to convert the 1.5 Tesla frequency up to 7 Tesla and then back down for the receive system. And we also had a separate RF power monitor in place. And uh, Doug had done a very good job beforehand. And when I arrived, the system was pretty much already ready. And we just had to switch it on and took the first images. Doug told me actually that the first images were already taken in August. I wasn't there in August, so I, I don't know. But that were at least the first images that were taken when I was there. So here we have those images. We took some phantom images and then also some images of a monkey and they could already be reported in our quarterly report to the ONDCP in October 2001. Afterwards, I then started looking at the system itself and mainly at the RF components. I have an RF background. I used to work in the RF coil group in Germany for a while and have some RF expertise at least. And I noticed that um, 
the components we have include two mixer stages and one of the mixer stages uses a frequency which is very close to the seven tesla frequency so i wondered whether that can somehow be converted and that we bypass one of the mixer stages and just use this one mixer stage which is close to the frequency and see whether we can make that work on the seven tesla so i started modifying the components and i was lucky that it all worked as i had planned it and after a while we had a kind of fully integrated system seven tesla system without the need of external mixers and converters and i also managed to modify the rf power detector that we also could use the siemens integrated power monitor for the same purpose so that was i think quite a big step to make the seven tesla uh, more unique and also to allow for uh, multi-channel coils um, but then a little later in April 2001, um, the first gradient coil replacement um, occurred. Uh, the Magnex coil was broken, that was initially shipped with the system, and it had to be replaced by, we decided to go for an AC44 coil, which was shipped with the Allegra system, uh, with the 7 Tesla console in the first place. It was just in storage at some point, and that was the same coil as it is used on the Allegra system as well. So that was then Simon's big time where Simon started building all the cards. We went to Home Depot, bought some wood and uh, Simon de designed all those nice cards where we could put the gradient coil on during uh, the replacements. Uh, here are some more pictures. You see that it was always a collaborative effort. There were many people always involved in the swap of the gradient coils. Uh, this is the Magnex call we take out. On the pictures, you also see Wilfried Schmidt, Graham Wiggins. And the, on the other picture, then Simon Sigalowski, Greg Kirk, and then again, Chris Wiggins and Larry Wald. Um, on this one picture on the side, you also see then how exhaustive it was that uh, Graham and Wilfried had to take a small nap. On the bottom, actually, you then see one of the shells we also built here at MGH. It's, a, uh, it's our own design. It was a shell uh, in which the gradient leads were put. And the idea was to make it as rigid as possible. Um, so it was a fiberglass shell filled with epoxy resin. And we wanted to make sure that the coils can't move in the magnetic field. There would be strong forces on the coils, and we wanted to avoid that. So um, that we don't have any cables breaking if they have constantly move. What we didn't consider, though, is that the resin, if the cables get hot, the resin gets soft again. No? And together with the gradient coil swap, we also uh, put new covers on the system so that the system looked much nicer afterwards. So on the picture, again, you see Chris Wiggins, Larry, Wilfried Schmidt, myself, Simon Sigalowski, Franz, and Ben Stöckel. And then in August 2002, it was already mentioned, so you probably see a few things here again and again now. Um, uh, the first volunteer scan happened, and I was mainly in charge of the entire system electronics. I figured there's nobody else who should go into the system except for me. And so I volunteered to be the first uh, volunteer on the 7 Tesla. I signed all the paperwork, went in, and it was quite an interesting experience. In the beginning, I had the feeling that I'm just going on straight, on a straight line into the magnet, but the closer I got to the center of the magnet, I felt that it was some, it was, the table was taking a curve or so, a slight curve to the left which I couldn't understand. And once it had stopped the table, I felt as if I was in a big tumble dryer and it started rotating very slowly. It was an interesting experience. It took a little while until I got used to it. And then when I got out, it was turning in the opposite direction again. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. As you can see, well, it was already mentioned before, you can see the uh, streak artifact in the center of the images, which took us some time to get used to that and we tried to find a few things to avoid this, these artifacts. But apart from work, I also had time for quite some leisure activities. We went to the tavern occasionally for lunch. We took our visitors there also for after work events. Wilfried Schmidt taught me, taught me how to sail. So I went sailing. I 
joined the Courageous Sailing Center there in the Navy Yard and all the guests that we had from Germany and also guests and friends here from Boston. I took on sailing trips in the Boston Harbor. It was always a nice experience with Larry and Moshe Barr. I sometimes went to play squash and racquetball in the Constitution Quarters building where I lived. And we also had a soccer list and met for playing soccer on this baseball field below the Tobin Bridge, sometimes twice a week. So Tuesdays and Thursdays we went and played soccer. Sometimes we were more people, sometimes less, but it was also always very nice. And here in Boston, I also had the opportunity to pick up my childhood dream and I started to learn how to fly. I took flying lessons and that was also very nice. So it was already shown before now this uh, probably longest drill that was ever used on a seven Tesla system. It was again uh, this one shell that I mentioned before where we didn't consider that the gradient coil, uh, that the gradient cables may get hot and uh, melt to the resin. Now it turned out that that happened and one of the cables broke due to fatigue. And um, we had to take the shell out, but unfortunately also one of the bolt got, got loose and it welded itself into the socket of the gradient coil. So we had to drill this bolt out and we couldn't ramp the magnet down. So we had to try to find some solutions to do that. And the idea was to build a long drill, extend it with some tubes. Simon did an excellent job there. And then I went into the magnet and Larry was operating the drill and we tried to drill the remaining stud out and cut a new thread into this great coil socket, which was quite an interesting experience. Yeah, and we were successful. Huh? So, uh, but just shortly afterwards in June 2003, it turned out uh, that we wanted, we had to replace the gradient coil again. This time it was not broken, but it was supposed to be replaced by a more powerful gradient set. The AC44 was replaced by the AC88, which delivers basically twice the performance in terms of slew rate and in terms of gradient amplitude. And again, it was a big effort. This time we were supported by a German a uh, colleague from the gradient coil lab in order to try to avoid that we have problems again with the gradient leads. He came and made sure that the gradient leads are now properly connected, and properly built. And I believe since then we didn't have any trouble with the gradient leads at least anymore. Um, what we also had is always recurring problems with the cooling water at MGH. And um, sometimes the filters in our cold dead refrigerators were clogged and we didn't notice it that the cold heads were switching off due to over temperature and then the magnet warmed up and the boiler increased significantly and it was sometime later when we noticed at the boiler at the magnet helium level that uh, we lost a lot of helium and an emergency helium delivery was required to top off the helium in the magnet again. So we figured we need to develop some tools and we developed an, uh, our own magnet supervision, which monitored the gradient temperature and the boil off of the magnet. And the data was published on the web so that we could also access it on the weekends during the night whenever we felt like it. But there was also a lot of uh, ultra high fit hardware development going on. So um, Larry, his passion was to build coils, so he built lots of birdcage and TM coils. Um, we also bought this circuit board router that allowed us to develop our own circuit boards. And then Larry trained Graham to become a coil developer, and Graham was then the main coil developer here at the NGH uh, center. And in the bottom picture, you see Laurent de Chantre. He performed some noise measurements at the gradient coil because of the big forces. Seven Tesla was also always a very loud system. Then I hope I'm not boring you with all the gradient coil swaps, but when I looked at all the pictures, that is what happened very often. So um, June 2008, 2006, then all components from the magnet 
bore were removed. There was still an old magnetic shim coil in there and fiberglass tubing and the AC88 coil, AC coil, and that was then replaced with a two gradient coil setup with a whole body gradient coil. I believe that was a tin trio gradient coil, correct me if I'm wrong, Franz. And um, then an AC88 uh, DORA coil, the D stands for thick, uh, it's the German dick word. Yeah. And um, so uh, you know, we had then two graded systems integrated and you could switch between the two systems with a big switch, which we called a Frankenstein switch. A little later, we also installed a third gradient coil from Piotr Starilic from Resonance Research. And then we even had two Frankenstein switches and three gradient sets for the seven Tesla. In 2007, another uh, gradient coil swap took place and uh, we replaced this AC88D coil with an AC84 coil, which had a bigger inner diameter uh, so that we had more space available for RF coils. And during that swap, one of the uh, carts which we built broke down when we wanted to push it sideways. And then actually this big heavy gradient coil dropped onto the floor in, in front of the building, uh, in front of base bay four. You know? So in this hallway in front of bay four. It was a big, big thing. And I tried to hold it, but I was not strong enough to hold this gradient coil. And I actually cut myself in the finger a little bit while trying to hold it. But my wife was also standing next to it. She was pregnant with our first baby. And that would have been a disaster if that had dropped on her. So we were quite lucky that nothing happened. And I think the floor was also not damaged. So it was big thing, but luckily nothing had happened. Uh, you can also see on the top right picture how we always had to improvise to get the gradient coils out of the uh, transportation and onto this lifting beam where we inserted it into the uh, magnet bore. And then a little later, the TX array was installed in August 2007. As Franz mentioned, that was not my business anymore. That was mainly in charge of the group in Germany, Ulrich Fonsius, for instance. He took a big share in that part. And on the images, you then see um, uh, Kevin and Vijay. And you see the setup, but you've seen that already in Franz's talk. Um, I was also involved in some other projects here at the MGH at that, at that time. The first one was the upgrade of the Avanto system in Bay 2 to a 96 channel system. So we added some more uh, receive <coughs> components and some more image reconstruction computers. And then uh, Larry and Graham, they built this 96 channel head coil. And as Franz has shown, they had some extraordinary results coming out of that system then. And uh, for the Tim Trio, we followed a similar approach and we upgraded the 32 channel Tim Trio system then to a 128 uh, channel system. And the, uh, we also built a coil for that system, a 128 channel cardio coil, which was built by Melanie Schmidt. And uh, David Sosnovic and Melanie, they also performed then the first measurements and I volunteered again in, in, this, in this coil. The shell was actually a fiberglass shell that was made especially for me. So I think somebody else would have had problems fitting into that. Or there would have been too much space around. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to thank you um, for this opportunity again, the organizers for coming here. It was really, really great. Uh, it was a big experience to get here again. Um, Thank you also for, to the MGH and to my former bosses at Siemens for this once in a lifetime opportunity to join this project here. It was very nice and thanks to all the people who contributed in the success of this uh, system. Thank you very much.